Welcome everybody, welcome to the tomb of illumination. The tomb we all dwell in. It's called Earth. Earth cell. Earth cell that started off as singularity in the centre of the hyperboloid, or the centre of the uh, toroidal field, which is the hyperboloid, creating our physical realm that we all dwell in as the split cell, northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere around that perimeter. And then Basically, meridians are split again, infinitely. Okay, so if you want to understand more of this, go check out some earlier videos of mine. But this video uh, is a little bit more about this design and what's happening here and how we see the stars in our night sky. So what's happening in the system is all the stars are in here. All the celestial bodies are in this hidden central vortex of creation. That we cannot get to. We're, we're, we're stuck in this zone here. You can't go back and back to creation. And what happens is this vortex turns in slow motion basically. It does a full 360 over 24 hours and that's your, that's your day. The sun is up here on the horizon of the black hole. Black hole, you've got the gurgler coming down the centre here which is one end of the Milky Way. The other end comes out over to the Tropical gap. We see a sun here, or we, no, we assume we see a sun here, but the actual sun's back here, that unseen plasma. Why we see it here is because basically this is made manifest in our realm. That's not manifest, that's it's metaphysical. But that has been created, blown up, and created out here for us. Okay? That's why we see the sun here, because this gap, tropical gap, all the way around the Earth, represents that circle in there. Okay? Which is the dead centre of the toroidal field. And what happens is when this turns, see that creation, back in creation, is vertical. Everything sits vertical. But now in our realm, it's all horizontal. If you understand the difference between um, a magnetic field and a, an electrical current, they're 90 degrees to each other. That's basically the same with Earth, because we're a similar system, magnetic and electrical, electromagnetic. See these two magnetic fields build up on the tropical sides to create the dielectric, create the electromagnetic induction. That feeds back into here. It's all self-feeding. That's a long story. But anyway, I thought I'd just draw it up. What's happening? And this is basically what it looks like. See, this in the southern hemisphere, the sun swings out of the south here and comes around like this. In the centre north, comes out of the north and swings around like this. That's the flow of the magnetic field. And, this, and, and basically the ecliptic plane. The sun follows the ecliptic plane. So when the ecliptic plane tilts down, the sun will flow down following the ecliptic plane. And when it comes back up to the northern hemisphere summer, it, it just follows the ecliptic plane. So you've got to just put that like that. You've got the sun coming out of the north here, the sun coming out of the south. But it's all the way around because that's a mirrored effect type thing coming happening so all a bit too much for you spinning ballers but you need to go and check out a lot more of my videos to get a bit of a grasp on it so I've drawn it up here you see and then you draw it up and you realize oh well you know the Maori in New Zealand have what they call the muku and they have these on each side of their nostril so there's the nose tattooed on each side of their nostrils where did, where did that come from because all the old ancient cultures knew all about creation. They've since lost all the knowledge. So, and that's where we apparently are supposed to see the sun in the, in the tropical gap, the ecliptic plane, right? In this gap around here. But like I said, it's not really there. But it's, uh, it's the imitation, the image we see, because this is imitating creation. 
Okay? So it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of like this. If you go back to creation, singularity, it's there at the center of these two fields. But out in the created world where we now dwell, it sits there like this. That is represented in here. So as, as the sky move, rolls, the sun comes around like this. So it comes out of here. We don't see it come out in the morning. We only see it come from the east. Start about here. And it finishes around here in the west. But that, drawing that part's a different story, a different model. Of the, I've just tried to draw the magnetic fields of Earth and how they go, how they work. They flow out of the south, swing around to the tropics, Tropic of Capricorn on the southern side, and then drop straight down to the Earth. And through the Earth, then up here, where they come out here, that swings around to the Tropic of Cancer and drops straight down to the Earth. Goes through the ground and then comes back up here to flow out again. Okay, so as this turns vertically like this, you see the spiral here, because you basically got this S curve. The spiral going on creates the, the flow out here in our, our realm. You have to think about that, put a lot of thought into it. Um, so this, this tropical gap is known in a lot of mythological stories where they tell the truth, they tell the physics of Earth, but it's all esoteric. One story, the kick of um, the Fisher King is, this is the, these are the waterfalls, both sides, where the water just drops straight down. The magnetic field drops straight down. That's where he drops his fishing rod, fishing line over. In the story, go read it. How his uh, father stays, the old man stays back in the castle, back at the centre here. And he goes out to meet, meet the guests. I mean, these people are coming on their journey to meet. And these are coming on to meet. He's going out to meet the guests. The, and they go fishing, drop the line down. It's all described, but nobody understands it except me, apparently. Um, in the religious stories, that's the banks of the Jordan, the banks of the Nile, um, the Red Sea. Or the crossing of the Red Sea also. Many, many depictions of that because, um, or stories regarding that, because that's the most holiest of holy places on earth, that gap. And at, at this, this particular time of the year, where the southern field has shrunk away and the north is up here, basically allows for an overlay. There's an overlay where the southern field has come up under here. And then it comes back out. When it comes out, this comes down, this swells up. Well, this swells up mainly. That swells up. But at the same time, it's parting. You're getting a parting effect. And that's the parting of the Red Sea in the, myth in the Christian story. Okay? Because he's gone down into a mente, or I don't know, I can't remember what the cross story is, but you're not there till you come out of, coming out of this dark place coming out of Egypt. It's, it's, it's uh, spiritual, psychological, um, and it's, it's physics when it comes to the flat earth design. No one's ever taught or told this. It's all hidden from you. It's to do with expansion and contraction, like everything else on this earth. In, in, the, in our eyeballs, what we have is our... Um, there's like a, a reverse effect where um, I think it's I think it's the iris. It's the iris that expands and contracts. We think the pupil expands and contracts, but it's the iris. Or maybe it's the same as the Earth. See, this expands and contracts. This is contracted at the moment. Then it expands and comes right back up. Comes right up here, actually, right up there. And this is why they call it bread. Eat from the bread, which is eat from the, the force. The force be with you. It's in there. Everything we need to know is in there, in the electromagnetic field. 
And let me just read a passage here, which is would be pretty hard to explain actually. This I put a ring around this a couple of years ago, so I must have known exactly what it meant then. Um, this is um, Genesis, Genesis tw chapter thirty-two. Verse 31, yeah, verse 31. And as he passed over, Pen or just before it here, yeah. and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. So the face to face is these uh, northern and southern hemisphere, basically these two meeting here face to face. You'd have to see my earlier videos, but it's your arc of horizon meeting the opposite hemisphere, this point here, meeting face to face. It's mentioned pineal gland because basically that's the son of man is a pineal gland and if he gets his alignment like this and his, his stars are in the right place they were at um, at his conception of his physical birth, bingo! It all comes around again. It comes under 31 here, it says, And as he passed over Penuel, remember El always represents God. Pen can represent uh, a feather or, or divine, divinity. Uh, the sun rose upon him. Sun rose upon him. You see, the average guy will think, well, that means the daytime, but no. That there is the Milky Way, the southern Milky Way, the northern Milky Way, align at this particular time of the year. And the sun is in the Milky Way, isn't it? Not that you probably know it if you're a spinning baller. That's the back of the sun we see at night, it's around about where Sagittarius A is, because the sun is on the horizon of the black hole. So this is the sun, it's the alignment. The sun is above him, it's a zenith. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank. Shrank. Which is upon the hollow of the thigh. But at the same time you could say high. He says here, And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. It halted upon the high. That's your arc of horizon. You're down here. It's your capstone. That's your zenith point of the star Milky Way alignment at night above you. When you're asleep. It won't happen if you're awake. Um... Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, upon this day, unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. It's, it's got two stories in there, the flat earth story and the man story. What's down there between his legs? You could say the thighs. It's the coccyx, and down that region is the Kondalini, the co co coiled up snake, which is the Kondalini. And that has to, you, your body has to be in tune, the stars have to be in the right place for that snake to rise, the Kondalini to rise. Just like the Indians blowing their flute and up comes the snake. It's all about being in tune, your body, and it comes up, that's, that's shrunk away. We're all born with it shrunk away. It's basically connected to your soul. That is your soul. You raise your Kundalini, you gain your soul. Uh, so that's, um, that's all I wanted to show really. That's one aspect. Which way? This way. So it comes out, it swings around from the east, goes up to your north, the magnetic field. It goes straight down. Comes out of here, around from the east, over to there, north in the northern hemisphere. Okay, it shoots down, that's the magnetic field. But this daily cycle comes around, swings right around and back, and loops back around there again, to come out again. That's, I need to 
be a bit more prepared to explain that one for you. But that's how the magnetic fields work. Now many years ago, when they were trying to figure out the Earth's system, like 150 years ago, or maybe 200 or 300, maybe 5, um, some of them thought the Earth was a cylinder, you see. But, and they would have had this similar design, because they knew all this stuff back in the day. The Freemasons had come along and hidden it all from everybody. So taking, taking the two hemispheres and, and putting them together to make it a ball. <laughs> So you've got one rotation here and a sister rotation here and they want you to think you live on a ball. Earth is flat, you can't get out. So any dummies who think they can fall off, you know, they're just brain dead dummies. You can't get out. Look, there's a field here. It's like a force field. Okay? And you can't get in there either. You can't fly into that dead center. But nobody can find the dead center. place of inaccessibility, you can't get in there anyway. So that was uh, one of their designs, wasn't it? Uh, thinking that a map should be a cylinder. So you've got the, uh, you've got the uh, Gleason map, where everything expands outward, which is correct, because everything does expand out from the center of the toroidal field. The whole field expands as it comes out. So does man and everything in it as they move south. Then he comes back. It's all relative to the observer. You see, I've got the Gleason. But then because he's relative to everything out here, the observer is relative to everything on Earth, then it becomes a parallel. Everything's parallel. This is why we have the, uh, what's the other map? Gleason, can't think of the name now. Makeda. The Makeda map. So they work together, the Gleason and the Makata. That's for expansion if you want to look down on Earth as a whole. But as relative to the observer, you would look at a Makata map for, um, for your distances and that, for travelling. Uh, but on a, a more metaphysical scale, uh, Earth can be depicted like this. This is not the full model, of course, but it's similar to this. So remember, the sun we see out here is only an image, an imitation of the real sun that's back here. Okay? Because that's the, that Milky Way is the black hole basically through it and down through there. So you've got a field coming out this way and a field coming in this way. And they both meet and create the sun. Okay? Look, check out the Mary Mukus on their noses. Okay, if you like this sort of thing, think about uh, walking up to my Patreon. Get some more information there. Help support me and put a thumbs up or likes up, whatever they say. And uh, subscribe and don't be afraid to share. If you want to pinch my information, take it out there, whatever, as long as everyone gets to know about it. Thanks.